I'm Mike, and today, a quick overview of how our dietary choices affect the ocean. Us landlocked people especially do not give the ocean the attention that it deserves, but you clicked on this video, so as a citizen of the world, I'm sure that you too are concerned with the ocean, so good on you for caring. All right, let's get started. It's the ocean, fish live in the ocean, so let's first look at fishing to get a bird's eye view. This map represents worldwide fishing pressures over the last half century, going from blue to red, where red is the most intense of fishing pressures. Now we'll get to the specifics of the effects that this has on ecosystems in a bit, but first I have to ask the overarching question, can we actually quantify all this fishing? Estimating exactly how many fish are removed through fishing throughout the entire ocean every year is a bit difficult, but the organization Fish Count did do quite a detailed assessment. No, Fish Count doesn't appear to be some crazy vegan exaggeration center. They actually strive to get more humane fishing, but like humane meat, that is not supported by most vegans generally. They took FAO numbers of the total weight of fish caught around the world. The larger fish estimate came up with 900 170 billion fish being taken from the ocean each year. If those fish were on the smaller end, they are up around 2.7 trillion fish per year. For some perspective, we raise and kill about 70 billion land animals a year for food. That is unfathomable. All of these numbers are unfathomable, so let's just move on before our brains collectively explode. Since much of this fishing is done with massive nets, like in the case of trawling, where they drag a net across the ocean floor, several species that are not intended to be caught are caught and often die. You probably already know that this is referred to as bycatch or bykill, and looking again to FAO numbers, the shrimp industry, for example, generally catches five pounds of other sea creatures per one pound of shrimp. Also, an average of 85% of shrimp bycatch is discarded, and in some areas of the ocean, it is up around 97 or 98%. In places where bycatch discard is lower, like 40 to 60%, bycatch is often kept and turned into feed for fish farms. So even if you're buying farmed fish, you're still supporting fishing in the ocean, oftentimes. And it's worth noting that about one third of all fish that we catch and bring back to land gets fed to livestock. As Quartz reports, even many of the fisheries around the US, shrimp or not, discard the majority of their catch, often killing thousands of sea turtles every year. And as the World Wildlife Foundation says, nearly all species of sea turtles are classified as endangered, enough said. And the bycatch mortality rate for sea turtles at over 40% is still actually lower than a lot of other species because they can actually breathe air. Other ones like fish can't. So how do the fish population stand up to this massive constant extraction from the sea? Well, many of them are collapsed or collapsing. According to the FAO, in 2012, 87% of fisheries are either overexploited or fully exploited. And you may have heard phrases like, we could see fishless oceans by 2048, or seafood could end by 2048, and these extrapolations have been criticized, but this study, the origin, was merely exploring what would happen if rates of fish continued to decline. They say, quote, This trend is of serious concern because it projects the global collapse of all taxa currently fished by the mid-21st century, based on the extrapolation of regression in figure 3a to 100% in the year 2048, 100% gone. This is figure 3A, and it's kind of like saying if the stock market keeps crashing at the same rate, then eventually everything will be worth zero. Yeah, it's not likely that we're gonna go down to zero fish, but I think it's enough of a dramatic case to say that if we keep doing what we're doing, we could see all of these fish species collapse. Much like the Atlantic Cod in 1992. Look at that, bam, none. Now let's look at how fishing affects keystone species, which are defined as, quote, a species on which other species in an ecosystem largely depend, such that if it were removed, the ecosystem could change drastically. Whales are a prime example of ocean keystone species because they feed a little bit deeper down, and then they come up and create massive poop plumes on the surface, which feed the primary producers, the phytoplankton. As the base of the ecosystem, this whale fertilization actually fuels carbon sequestration. According to NASA, quote, Currently, 48% of the carbon emitted to the atmosphere by fossil fuel burning is sequestered into the ocean. Yeah, it's not all sequestered by phytoplankton. They're just responsible for fixing 30 to 50 billion tons of carbon annually. 
In fact, according to this study, whaling of just one species in one part of the ocean resulted in 2 million tons of carbon remaining in the atmosphere annually. And zooming out worldwide, about 300,000 cetaceans, which includes whales and dolphins, are killed by fishing vessels each year. And the U.S. Ocean Commission says that bycatch, the risk of becoming bycatch, is the number one worldwide threat to whales. All right, now let's move on to sharks. Yeah, sharks are scary with their several rows of teeth, but according to the International Union for the Conservation of Nature's Shark Specialist Group, 28% of sharks are at risk for extinction. This is largely because according to this study, we kill an estimated 63 to 273 million sharks per year. Some of these deaths are by kill, some of them are intentional for shark fins, and some of them are intentional as predatory killing to keep fish stocks up. Just like how the US government has killed millions of land predators like wolves over the last few years, of course, to protect livestock. We will never be able to know the impact of killing all these sharks because kill certain predators and the ecosystem can be impacted exponentially. For example, kill predatory sea snails and the coral-eating starfish populations can explode and decimate coral reefs. This study showed that in particular, the crown of thorn starfish was responsible for over 40% of the Great Barrier Reef destruction over the last 27 years. And when you're talking about coral reef destruction, you can often be talking about extinction. Our coral reefs are like the rainforests of the ocean in terms of biodiversity. According to the World Wildlife Foundation, they hold 25% of all ocean species. And as this report mentions, 55% of our world's reefs are threatened by fishing. And back to this study, quote, Although marine extinctions are only slowly uncovered at the global scale, regional ecosystems such as estuaries, coral reefs, and coastal and oceanic fish communities are rapidly losing population, species, or entire functional groups. And this study from late last year points to the mass extinction in the ocean that humans are driving, saying that, quote, the preferential removal of the largest animals from the modern oceans unprecedented in the history of animal life may disrupt ecosystems for millions of years, even at levels of taxonomic loss far beyond those previous mass extinctions. In other words, these scientists are saying that our taste for seafood could do millions of years worth of damage. But how our diet affects the ocean is not limited to eating fish. We now have 400 to 500 dead zones in any given year. To be accurate, they do increase or decrease depending on warmth and season. And I've mentioned dead zones in my video several times, so by now you know that they are algae blooms that are caused by an excess of nutrients that then eats up all of the oxygen and compromise compromises the ecosystem, often killing large amounts of fish. This is fueled, literally fertilized by our food choices on land. As this US government paper mentions, the animals that we raise on land poop 39 billion humans worth of solid waste that's several times the population of Earth in humans in the US alone. When you then add the fertilizers that we use to grow approximately one third of the Earth's grain that is fed to animals, it's very possible that the choice to eat animals and their byproducts is the leading contributor to dead zone creation. Okay, by now, if you eat fish, you might be thinking, well, I can just buy that sustainable fish and stick to certain species that don't have as much of an impact. This is where we get to the issue of mislabeling. As this Oceana report from just late last year mentions, in the US where I live, when you actually look at the DNA, 28% of fish are mislabeled. And have you ever eaten at a swanky LA sushi restaurant? Well, from just a couple months ago, nearly half of all of the fish in sushi restaurants in LA that were studied were different species than they claimed. And back to the Oceana report, zooming out worldwide, about one-fifth of fish are mislabeled, and in an extreme case, 98% of bluefin tuna are mislabeled. And this is sketchy on many levels, as the author of the report stated, quote, Illegally caught seafood, some caught or processed with slave labor, could be making its way onto our dinner plates disguised as legal catch. And I cover that side of the fishing industry a bit more in my Vegan for Human Rights video, 
But the point here is that even if you're eating a fish that you think is in line with your values, there's a pretty good chance that it's not even the fish you think it is. Now to sustainability. Some experts in the field of global food security, like Richard Oppenlander, claim that there is no such thing as sustainable seafood. But what about that Marine Stewardship Council or MSC label? Well, he states that, quote, Customers relying on MSC or any mode of certification to justify their demand to eat fish are being misled, and more importantly, it ultimately furthers the decline in numbers of various fish species and the effect on other ecosystems. And he goes on to say that they have never actually rejected anybody that has completed a certification. So in a sense, Uncle Chum's shotgun scampy fishing co could pass their certification. Yes, my point and shoot shotgun fishing barrel technique has been approved as sustainable as per the MSC. And they still slap their label on species that scientists consider to be critically endangered. But it's not just Oppenlander. In 2009, Greenpeace rated the MSC certification as a weak certification and a leaked document from the internal workings of the World Wildlife Foundation exposed their criticism of MSC for their conflict of interest that they get 75% of their income from selling these certifications and that they have relaxed their standards possibly to increase that income. In conclusion, as somebody who used to eat fish, I can tell you that I was certainly not aware of how the fish on my plate affects the ocean, how maybe just one bite of shrimp can be doing five times as much damage to other sea creatures, how I was contributing to a looming possible extinction, I was contributing to the collapse of oceanic ecosystems, and to the bycatch of endangered species like sea turtles and whales and sharks and many other creatures. So I have to ask you, if you do not support the results of these fishing practices, then please don't support these fishing practices. And the best way to do that is to not eat fish. Categorically, if you open up your diet to including fish, fish that is not up to your standards is gonna make it through. You know, you're gonna eat at a sushi restaurant or a friend's house or something like that. And you don't even know if it's the fish it says it is anyway. So obviously as a vegan, I don't support fish consumption from a sentience perspective and also a health perspective, which I will get to in future videos. But finally, I just wanna say again that there is no such thing as sustainable fishing, not just because the certification is weak and corrupt, but also because the ecosystems of the ocean cannot support our demand for fish and it's also worth noting if you're trying to dodge that oceanic fish and eating farmed fish a lot of those farmed fish are fed fish from the ocean or plants that could be more efficiently eaten directly by humans all right that's it for today if you felt enraged by the statistics you just heard and want to channel that rage into support feel free to go over and support someone like sea shepherd sea shepherd has done some great work in the realm of fighting illegal whaling for example you can also share the video that helps too. like it subscribe all right, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.